It's an Atlas 7B. So on the last couple of episodes, what we did was introduce the Atlas 7B that I have. We took it apart, got it cleaned up, stripped the paint off of it, and got it ready to paint. So let's paint this thing. Now the wood parts look so horrible when I got it, I didn't know if I could bring it back, but uh, with paint remover, um, cleaning up with um, degreaser, getting all the oil and stuff off of it, and then sanding it, the wood actually looks really, really good. Now the stain that I used was cherry, and here you can see after several coats of the cherry, it turn that wood a nice color and that's the the color I was going for and now I'm going to seal it up with polyurethane. Now I wanted this to be a very durable finish so I would put on the urethane let it sit overnight and then I would come out and sand it and get all the um, imperfections out and then I'd put another coat on and I think I ended up with four or five coats. The key to a successful paint job is the prep. And one of the things I'm doing is getting it all cleaned up and now I'm cleaning it with, uh, degreasing it that is, with denatured alcohol, getting all the, the sanding particles off and all the grease off of it. Sometimes I use brake clean, but this time I use denatured alcohol. Now most of the time I usually mix up my paint and use a, a, a spray gun, but this time I use rattle cans. I uh, saw a guy's shaper on YouTube and I love the color and found out from him he, uh, he told me what color he used and he used rattle cans, so I decided to use rattle cans myself. And it is so much more convenient because you don't have to do any cleanup on the, the spray gun. And uh, actually this paint job turned out really nice. Now on all the pieces, what I use is an etch primer and I just dusted it with that. Then I go back and do a, a heavier coat with the etching primer. Then I use a high build primer and then I put the paint on. And the, the, it's always nice to see that paint go on. It really, it really transforms it. I've been getting some really good feedback on the aviation stories that I have uh, shared. So I thought I would share another fighter pilot story with you. And if you remember, fighter pilot stories always start off with, there I was. So, there I was. I was number two in a four ship of F-16s, leaving from Homestead, Florida, going up to our normal bombing range, which is in Avon Park, Florida. And I was a brand new wingman. And just so you know, the wingman's positions are the uh, even numbers and uh, the lead's positions are the odd numbers. So number one is the flight lead, two is a wingman, number three is the element lead, and number four is a wingman. And so I'm number two uh, this, of this four ship. So Avon Park Bombing Range is a conventional bombing range that is inert only, which means we can drop our dummy bombs, 2,000-pound uh, bombs if we want to, but they can't have explosives in them. And today we're scheduled to drop six BDU-33s, which is a little blue 25-pound smoke bomb, and it has the same ballistics as um, like 500-pound bombs or 2,000-pound bombs. And that's what we practice with. And we're set up for two strafing runs. So 
So the flight up to the range was just the normal flight and we get set up to do our bombs and the, the ranger clears us to drop the bombs. So flight lead rolls in, he drops his. So as I roll in to drop my bombs, things just didn't look right. Um, I was off my angle coming in and I didn't realize it, but there's an extremely strong crosswind and things in my HUD just didn't look right. But I was there to drop bombs and by golly, I was going to drop my bombs. I get startled all the time with that garage door. So back at the bombing range, as I'm looking at my HUD, ready to drop my bombs, things didn't look right. I'm going to drop my bombs anyway. I go ahead and pickle off my first bomb. Now what I'm expecting to hear from the Ranger is a distance and a clock position from the target. But what I hear is, foul two, you came close to the range tower. Now here on the restoration, I'm trying to get out this Gitz oiler and I just can't get it. Well, I got it. I used the uh, left-handed drill bit, kind of started in here with like a tap holder and it dug into it and I was able to pull it out. So there she be. Now back to my exciting story. So when the ranger said, foul to you came close to the range tower, I thought he was talking about my airplane. Now this is what the bombing circle looks like. Now the blue line is the line I'm supposed to run down and drop my bomb into the lollipop there. And the center of that is the, the target. But the red line is the line I flew not that I wanted to, the wind was blowing me like that. I had this red paint left over from another restoration and thought I would use it on this restoration. And so now I'm going to use my gun to paint the arm that connects to the ram. My son thought it'd be a good idea to paint it that to make it look nice on the inside. And so I did. But first, it needs to get the coat of etching primer, uh, build-up primer, and then we'll paint it red. Meanwhile, back at the range, the green little dot there is where the range tower is. And the ranger had fouled me on the first run and uh, said I came close to the range tower. Now, when I'm setting up for my second bomb, I noticed the fire someplace that there wasn't a fire that I remember before. Now that little red square is where the fire was and that little green box is where the range tower is. So I roll in for bomb number two and I try to correct. I see I'm still on an angle. Things don't look right in my HUD and I drop my second bomb. Now as I pull up, I hear the mic get keyed and in the foreground I hear the ranger say, Foul two, you're off the range. You came close to the range tower. And in the background, I heard the other guy scream, Oh, God! So the flight lead said, Safe it up two and go hold. Well, let's see what we got. So I safed up my airplane, went and held, and watched them drop their bombs. But then I noticed a second fire. Now, these fires out there, I realized, are from my <laughs> white phosphorus bombs I just dropped out there. And the second one was closer to the range tower. And now I see why the guy fouled me and, and kicked me off the range. And now I start thinking, oh, no, what kind of trouble am I going to be in when I get home? Now, the inertial navigation system on here not only navigates for us until we are where we are on the planet, but it also tells, it feeds the, the bombing computers. 
Yes, guys, I paint the underside even though you can't see it. I just want to protect the metal. So when I landed, the normal procedure is we take our inertial uh, guidance uh, information. And uh, to put it in perspective, if you have a one knot deviation, the airplane's good, a two knot deviation, they're gonna watch the airplane. If it's three knots or more, the airplane's grounded. Well, mine was 48 knots. And the thing is, because of the wind, the way it was going, and the direction that the inertia was off, everything stacked the wrong way. And that's why things didn't look good in my HUD. So when my flight lead looked at my HUD camera film, he said, look how off that is. Why did you drop your bombs? I'm like, well, well, I had to drop. Now the good news is uh, nobody got hurt. Um, the also good news is since I was a lieutenant, I wasn't doing anything willfully. It was just an error. The debriefing, what I learned in that is, if it doesn't look right, don't drop your bombs. See, I was just, you know, had my fangs out. I was young. I'm dropping my bombs no matter what. But I realized if it doesn't look good, don't push the pickle button. And now back to the restoration. So um, when you unmask these things, you kind of got to be a little bit careful removing the tape. And to me, it's always like Christmas. Now, the last thing about my story there is fighter pilots hate doing straight in approaches. We love doing overhead approaches, but since I have four bombs left on my airplane, I had to do a straight in approach like an airliner, which is just painful for us. So instead of getting to come in fast and doing a cool looking pattern, I had to do an airliner looking pattern. So, oh, that was kind of a punishment in and of itself. So here I decided to try to spice it up a little bit and see if I could stay a color within the lines, basically. And it really did, it turned out pretty good. And because I'm freehanding this, guys, I really took my time at it. After peeling a lot of the tape off, I also use a razor blade on clearing some of the paint that got through. So guys, that uh, concludes the uh, painting episode. I hope you enjoyed this. Next time, it's coming together. I hope to see you then. And thank you so much for watching.